Hey guys, welcome back to Switch's Kerbal Space Program and the end of season extravaganza! Yes, that's right, with Kerbal 1.0 coming out today, it's time to wrap up everything we have been doing in this season. So of course, this means I'm going to be launching a new craft for Jewel. Now, one of the things that I'd like to talk about about this launch is for some reason the co uh, probe core on the top of the vehicle here got put on back to front so I was going left instead of right which got very confusing let me tell you another thing that I want to show you is this wobble up in orbit we don't really need to talk about like getting up into orbit by this point in the, in the game I'm sure all of you guys know how to put ourselves up into an orbit but look at this what a circularization burn. So as previously explained, this is going to Jewel, and that's pretty much all we're going to see of this mission until the very end of this episode. So yeah, there we go, leading strong, right? One thing that I had to do in preparation for today's episode was spending a lot of time time warping through days and days and days. This was like a 36 day jump here. Uh, and let me tell you, that felt very strange. Those of you that have been following this all season, thank you very much guys for those of you that have. I'm going to be saying that a lot today, by the way. Thank you for watching all, to, all this season's kind of given validity. But those of you that have been with me will know that I don't like time warping through days like that. I'd rather have my, my uh, space program doing a lot of stuff. Wasted days being wasted opportunities and all that. But with that in mind, what were we time warping today for? Well, we were time warping to make sure we could go see what the Kalanichi was doing. Now, if you remember, this guy was originally bound for Jewel until I completely messed up the uh, transfer window. Ended up sending it to Moho because that's the best thing. And if we take a moment to look out of the map view here, we completely missed it. Which, um, yeah, no, great. So there's Moho, there's the ship. They should have been hitting it at this point. The, the alarm clock that I'd set was for the Sphere of Influence transfer going into Moho. So obviously th this was working at some point. But this leads me to a new method of sending my space probes out. Uh, every now and then now, uh, every sort of halfway towards the target, I will be setting new maneuver nodes just to make sure I am on target. But you'll be seeing that next season. Um, so yeah, lesson learned there. That, that's, that's the only thing I can, I can report about the Kalanichi probe is we've had to learn a lesson. Of course, given more time, I could have possibly gone around for another orbit, done some trim maneuvers, got myself in there, uh, laid down more maneuver nodes to make sure that I'm constantly headed for it. But unfortunately, end of season extravaganza, closure on all missions. Closure. Yeah. So with that horrible shock to the system, I thought I'd come check the Autumn Leaf and make sure that's actually hitting Eve. No, what a surprise, it's not. Now, I, I did mention that when I was setting up these maneuver nodes that it was probably actually going to be due to the fact of all the time warping in between now and then, or now and that past time, whatever you want to say. Uh, so I should have actually known all about this. So what I'm going to do now is just start setting random maneuver nodes all the way through my uh, my flight as i have previously explained just so that we know what's going on set the alarm clock and let's move on to something else because you know this is going to take an entire orbit of the sun and that that takes a while what do we do in space programs where we're feeling like we've got a little bit of time to kill of course we make sure that all our uh, missions are getting a little bit more accurate uh, here we are making sure that the jewel encounter with the cluster of jewel here is as tight as we can make it but even with that i end up with this horrible sort of flashy maneuver node bit and no matter what I try to do it stays flashing but I know from past experience these flashy bits are dealable like this is probably going to be fine when we get over there hopefully and now for the real meat and pudding of today's episode the Juno boys obviously these guys left quite some time ago I, I'm guessing it was around episode 12 but you'll have to forgive me I can't remember exactly which episode number it is those of you that will be with me all season thank you very much guys will of course remember this um, and with the transfer windows being a little bit screwy as they are on the on the alarm clock at the moment I thought I would get these guys up nice and early join up with their pusher pro uh, not the pusher pro the pusher system so get themselves back home uh, and just make sure everything kind of works out all right now it is about this this point of 14 kilometers up that I'm starting to realize that maybe we don't have the fuel uh, for this particular mission I, I'm, I'm coming along at well my vertical speed is um, not my vertical speed my horizontal speed is 600 meters per second as we all know that's not really enough to be going around a planet here especially as now I have gone past my Apple apps and I'm coming down 
pretty hard. Uh, I'm trying to use my RCS to give myself a little bit of a boost here, but as, as we all are quite well aware, RCS is not really the best for when you're trying to get like orbital velocity on the go. It's really just for like changing your orbital speed when you're already up at those velocities, giving a little push here or there, not trying to do the entire thing. Um, but of course this means we are coming down quite hard and the more that I try the faster we're coming down and indeed I can see these hills raising up quite close now leading for quite a nice spread out explosion. So we hit F9 have another go this time using my RCS during the entire flight we get up to a much higher apple apps unfortunately this means a much quicker explosion at the end there. Head scratching mode is engaged and we get Bill out to go around and pick up some extra RCS thrusters off of the uh, the Dr. Hang here. Uh, it is pretty much the only extra equipment we've brought with us. It's a little bit of a shame that we don't have any extra fuel tanks on this, but it is of course just a hang glider. I don't even have any liquid tanks to like get it up into the air to begin with. It was just almost entirely meant to be for getting down and, and, and having a little bit of a play on heels and stuff. But unfortunately with everything going a little bit wrong on the Juno mission, we did didn't have much time for that but I'm reckoning these two extra RCS ports are going to give us a little bit of a extra boost obviously we used all our fuel uh, all our liquid fuel in the time it takes us to get up and crash onto the surface but we don't manage to use all our RCS fuel which to me meant we needed more ports to throw more RCS behind us to get us going further forwards which kind of works. Here we are up at 34 kilometers and given a, a lot more push, we're gonna start pushing our uh, periaps up here. You can see on the top left, my periaps is already at minus 17, 15, 14, 13, 12. It is going up quickly and indeed right little dramatic pause now we have gone around uh, to a positive number here and we're starting to push ourselves into a nice circular orbit this is the point I should have quick saved and for some reason I didn't um, I literally have no idea why I did not but we go around a couple of orbits we do a little bit of um, pushing around with our maneuver nodes and stuff here trying to get everything to match up and we actually have a close encounter like that now I think at this point well I did that well Maybe I can do better next time. At which point I do the third biggest blunder I have done this season and F9 it back to the surface of Juno. Honestly, I'm not sure why. It, uh, I just I feel so bad about it now. I should have stayed up in orbit. So with that stupidity out of the way, we go through the same rigmarole as last time. Bill goes around and picks up all the RCS ports. We spend ages trying to get up into orbit. Realised it was even worse inclination than beforehand. And then the real slog for survival begins. I have mentioned in the past how I am a true master of the get out and push it technique of spaceflight. And today, I truly earned my plummeting cannonball of the pushing technique today uh it's just so much pushing there was pushing pushing and more pushing obviously without any fuel up in orbit here the only real sort of expendable fuel that i had just trying to think of a good word to use there was the rcs pack uh, not the R the eva pack on the back of the kerbals here because this got re topped up every time i got back into the command center but it was long every time i was coming onto the uh, descending node i'm going to call it on the right hand side because i was looking at the same time all the time i was pushing towards anti-normal when we got down to periapsis i had to be pushing uh, forwards and when i got to the other descending node i was pushing nor normal i believe that was the way around it was uh, and then we got a quarter a whole quarter of an orbit to chill out before having to do the same all over again now this took forever like literally hours and hours and hours of just pushing things trying to get bill lined up right i did use bill every time because if you look at the top there you will see that he's got all the kerbal engineering now which gives me like a beautiful idea of like where my periaps is and my apple apsis is which is what i'm trying to line up with obviously all the information from the pusher craft because we're just trying to get as close as possible after what felt like six hours but was probably actually closer to like two maybe maybe three hours doing this uh we eventually got something approaching a close approach here you will see that i've managed to push my apple apps all the way up to like 300 meters there uh just to give you an idea of where we started we started at 30 meters on both my apple apsis and my periapsis well let's be honest 33 kilometers on both our, my apple apsis and periapsis after i'd done my um my burn into orbit and then use my jetpack to get all the way around to here you, you you see how much has changed there 
like literally Tom Hanks has nothing on Bill here he got out he did everything that needed to be done he did the entire journey if there is anyone who actually has been like the absolute saviour of this Juno mission Bill Kerman ladies and gentlemen Bill Kerman but last manoeuvre node is going into place and I think it's time we can actually start using what is left of the ship's RCS uh, you'll see that we've got 99 units of fuel there that should be enough to enable us to do some um, rapid rendezvous maneuvers I'm going to call them rapid rendezvous maneuvers uh, just so that we can like when we're finally getting in as close as we can to our target do everything that we need to do without having to get out and use the jetpack I mean that that just it, it wouldn't work with like the how quickly we needed to change speed and stuff like that as always the most vital part of the trip is indeed looking out the window ah oh, that beautiful 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 look of Juna there amazing just having a quick scan around the, the cockpit it's, it's nice to come in every now and then and of course let's not forget that this is the last time we get to see this particular cockpit I do believe it changes when we get to point zero one but now for the actual important bit of this mission we need to try and make this maneuver node as uh, spot on as possible uh, I do get out to do a little bit of a push here but it ends up being such a, a time tiny amount that I I just really kind of write it off quite early on uh, I did this to try and save some RCS as obviously uh, we didn't really want to use all our RCS trying to maneuver close when we actually want it to try and maneuver into the docking but I just as you can see I'm having so much trouble even just getting Bill lined up here that I'm just like you know what stuff it we're gonna do it all through the the wonderful power of this RCS we only have a 26 the 26 no less than that a 20 meter uh, meter delta v change which should be fine did i literally just say delta v change the change of delta yeah a uh, ch change of delta ah <laughs> oh, i'm breaking up here it's all going a bit much today <laughs> anyway enough of my uh mental breakdowns here let's get back to actually flying this ship after messing around a lot we actually come up with this close encounter which is kind of where we want to be uh, there was a little bit of trimming in between but you know this is just like a little puff here a little puff there trying to get our encounter down to less than well as close as it can possibly be really so with no pointing capabilities on the pushing probe I have to try and do this entirely with this command capsule here the uh, first thing I did was uh, controlled it from the docking port underneath because that's obviously the one that we want to use to uh, connect with so that's the one that we're going to have to use to fly from I do have a little bit of trouble switching my brain around just on the, the sort of the forwards and backwards directions here because I can definitely see that this ship should be going forwards towards me and my brain will not let go of that it's obviously some sort of bias that I've uh, picked up over time so I have a little bit of trouble uh, coming further forward so I only mean to but the, uh, the whole uh, thing now is just trying to keep everything pointed in the same direction and using the translation controls I J K and L to get us as close as possible when I say as close as possible to get us with the pinpoint accuracy that is necessary with, for a vessel like this and I can tell you Jeb is quite well experienced at doing this sort of things now uh, he is one of the few that have actually gone gone on to do some serious docking in this um, this series now that I stop and think about it, I don't think anyone else really has done any. I know there have been lots of robotic dockings and stuff like that, but I think our main actual ship-to-ship -ship mating almost always has been done either just by Jebediah or by a robot, which, um, I don't know, we'll, we'll have to try and address that next season, I suppose, get the Kerbals in there, especially Valentina, we'll have to see what she's all about. But with that little bit of waffling, we've finally put them together. You have no idea how much I felt like this wasn't going to happen at any point but with this done let's try and figure out how we are going to get home so playing around with the maneuver node i noticed that our polar orbit is giving us a bit of trouble with the uh exit trajectory from Juno but that's all right we can play around with that when we are out of side of the sphere of influence but it is still far too early to be uh making this burn right now so if we go to the space center and make uh, a few days fly by i actually do this a couple of times but i'm just going to do this in a single cut here Mainly so I can just go POW! Kerbin encounter. Okay, so now that the encounter's set up, the one thing that we really do need to do is kind of, you see between the command pod and the pushing capsule, uh, it's not capsule, pushing engines and stuff, we've got quite a wobbly joint there. So really we need to come out and fix that. So once again, Bill is the man, out he comes. And once he remembers how like all the attachment system works here, he's going to go around and make everything attach nice and strong here. There are only... Uh, what is it? Three support struts, I believe. Yeah, there are only three support struts. So, yeah, it's quite a strong, strong thing. As we all know, triangles are very strong um, shapes here. So, 
uh, three points of contact should be good enough. I mean, it follows all sort of climbing regulations as well as geometrical uh, niceness, if that's a term. But anyway, we are coming up to the point where we need to be actually making this burn. So we're going to go full throttle and just kind of rely on the instruments here. There's not much we need to do other than rely on the instruments. Um, apart from, there is one thing going on that I've not quite realised here, and that's because I am looking with the wrong port. Obviously, when I used the uh, rear uh, rear docking port to uh, line up for the docking procedure, I forgot to switch it back. So the first sort of two, three minutes of this burn were actually done in completely the wrong direction. So I had to turn around and go the other way. Just another joyous mix-up to add to my long list of mix-ups of this uh, series. Once again, thank you everyone who's been along with me for all of these mess-ups. Uh, I've, I've enjoyed them. I hope you guys have at least found them partially humorous. A little bit. I don't want to make myself look stupid without you guys uh, finding it funny anyway. And with that little bit of waffle over, we're just going to uh, make sure we're getting as close to curbing as we can here with this with this burn. And we will make that burn off camera. You're just going to trust me that that one will work, right? And after months drifting in space, finally, the Ignis is coming within range of the sphere of influence of Kerbin. And there we go. We are back home, sort of. We're, we are back within our home system. There, there's not really much more we can do to call home here. But, of course, there are problems. Um, I've not got any electric power to turn my vessel around. So, once again, Bill gets out to fix the day. I'm, I'm honestly not sure why Jeb and Bob have come along here. They, they just seem to want to sit around and soak up all the glory while Bill does all the work. But I suppose Bill's getting a little bit used to that. So, we're going to go face our radial and try and get our um, periaptis going up just above... Well, not just above the atmosphere, just above the surface. We want to be coming down into the atmosphere because... Well, I've not done an aero brake round curbing before, and I'd really like to do it before it becomes a problem. Obviously, with the 1.0 update coming, we're, I'm not going to be able to do ridiculous aero brakes like this anymore because we will just destroy our vessel, and that would be, well, that that would be uh, quite a, an anticlimactic way to end this particular mission. Could you imagine if we went through all this with all the, the, the coming up and trying to get back into orbit, the, the, the thrills and spills of landing a glider, realising we didn't have an engineer just to blow up in the atmosphere? Could you imagine that, really? I can. That, that would be quite quite horrendous here. Okay, so we're going to plummet our way down, and we're going to watch... Well, first we watch a sunrise, which is nice. Well, a sunset and a sunrise. Then we watch the mountains over there. Not just the mountains, but we have mountains and atmosphere. There is water everywhere. And then a partial eclipse. I've got to say, this is one of the most beautiful return missions I have ever partaken in. Uh, I, I don't care what, really what uh, Bob, Bill and Jeb think of this. I just... I'm, I'm reveling in it. I've got to turn the lights on because obviously with all this sort of darkness going on, it's not particularly good viewing. But... Will you just should we should we just slow down a little bit here take a moment to, to have a look now i'm keeping an eye on all my uh my, my orbital numbers here and i'm really quite worried with how quickly my apple apps is dropping down um i did do a aero brake calculation beforehand and it told me to come down this high but or this low sorry but it was come my apple apps was coming down so fast that i was fairly sure i was going to crash at the end of this if we carried on like this so i gave myself a quick burn to make sure we were still up quite high as it turned out i should really have listened to that calculation because uh, we're still up like hundreds of thousands of meters above the surface and i really wanted to come down at something like 200 kilometers which, which would have been nice uh, probably would have been where we would have ended up if i didn't um, try and mess it all up by burning my engines and stuff but here we go we are going to make sure we were putting some sort of circularization burn obviously we could have come straight back but our parachutes are still unpacked from landing on juna and of course bill whilst being an absolute god of this mission doesn't have the experience to be able to repack those chutes so we're just going to have to kind of park ourselves in a nice i, I say circular orbit a nice orbit around kerbin it's going to be eccentric just uh, due to the fact of that how we aero braked in here but here we go we're going to have a periapsis of 700 and apoapsis of 300 and i think it's time to launch another engineer up to be able to come and fix this Given the way this season has played out, I think that the best way to get an engineer up there is blatantly going to be via a space plane. Uh, obviously, these are the two major themes that have been running through this uh, particular season. We've had the Juno mission and we've had our, my struggle with space planes, as well as the standard career, earning money, going to the moon, getting to Mimus and such forth. So yes, I thought to bring those two major threads together, 
might be the way to finish here. Trying a slightly different technique for getting up into orbit today. Uh, obviously I have pre-selected the Ignis as my target and I thought whilst it was coming on to like being overhead might be a good time to get up my targeting uh, indicator on my nav ball and just use that to try and nullify all my speed. Now it worked really well to begin with but I wasn't sure how well it would last uh, once we get up to the point where we're trying to get our engines firing, our rocket engines firing and stuff like that so whilst i can kind of recommend this method i at the same time kind of don't uh we, we will watch this through at the moment but obviously with my my targeting reticule there i've gone to hit my my retrograde there and i i just feel like i'm a little bit shallow if you will uh, i'm coming down at like 30 kilometers and my apoapsis isn't much away from that and I'm bringing down my, my thrust here and it's just, it's just really not working. It's at the point where I'm starting to slow down. So we fire up my engines again and we're just gonna follow uh, basically the information on the right hand side with the, the Kerbal engineer there and just try and get ourselves up into a nice orbit. Uh, looking at the map view, we've kind of missed, but at the same time I am all right at, um, at doing rendezvous now. So with one simple maneuver node at the top of my flight there, I think we can probably get it sorted. And because I'm like super MLG Pro and stuff, we are actually bang on where we want it to be by the next orbit. Uh, unfortunately, we are running out of things that I am unaware that we are running out of. So I'm starting to use my uh, space plane here to try and bring myself as close as possible whilst at the same time maintaining a sort of a steady orbit without like crashing down into the atmosphere whilst we get close. That has happened to me more than once before so it's always on my mind especially when I'm trying to fly this ship and now I'm realizing I'm having a bit of uh, control issues and I haven't clicked what's going on here yet uh, mainly because when I opened up my my fuel canisters and stuff like that the one at the top said it still had stuff in it and it's a, just a shame that the one on the top wasn't actually electric charge anymore it's actually just liquid fuel i'm not sure what i've done to make those uh swap around on there but it, it totally mis misled me as to what was going on so i ended up drifting around and i was like oh well what's going on here i don't know maybe we'll come across to the ignis and use that to try and get ourselves close because obviously once you're this close with the rendezvous you can you can do it do it with either craft as long as you've got something to get you going with uh, and we are just closing in within the couple of kilometers here so i think now that you can see what's going on we're going to jump ahead a little bit to where you can see Frank drifting across from the Sparrow's Hope here and having a look at what's going on over here. Now, Frank obviously has um, this, like dual purpose here. He needs to do two things. He needs to repack all the parachutes and he needs to steal a uh, solar panel off the side of Ignis and take it back to the Sparrow's Hope. Uh, Unfortunately, with the Ignis kind of flailing around and doing all sorts of weird stuff here, I had to kind of back him off a little bit. And of course, what we're trying to do is just get a get a picture of him through the window this is something that i don't do very often and i thought we could do it whilst we're, we're packing our shoots and there we go hey frank what's going on the first kerbal these three have seen in ooh, over a year i'm not sure if it's a year and a half yet but hey it, it's pretty long uh, and i nearly forgot the solar panel um th this is kind of the mark of my my space state uh, space program is me forgetting everything but there we go everything's kind of done now so what we're going to do is fly back to the sparrows hope use um use all its fuel to to decelerate we're going to do the sparrows hope first because well basically the ignis is more important so we're going to do that last and using our beautiful horseshoe technique we're going to fly around in a great big circle i don't think we're going to be able to do this in 1.0 i could quite easily see this smashing up my plane with like all the atmospheric um shenanigans i suppose we're going to call them uh and finally coming for a landing Woo! Okay, so first up on getting the Ignis home, we're going to transfer all the fuel out of the pusher stage. Uh, this is no longer needed, and I'm going to just leave it in orbit as a reminder of the wonders that we partook in. Uh, we then need to wait round, wait until we are around on the opposite side of the planet from the Kerbal Space Center. Of course, that is after firing up all the engines that we uh, the disabled whilst we joined up with the with the pusher craft here and now we're looking for a, a good place to put the periapsis now i'm thinking 20 or 30 kilometers over the top of the desert normally does me incredibly well so we're going to like discard the maneuver node and just kind of have 
have it at what I think it will do. We're going to uh, rearrange our staging to make sure that our parachutes are down there. And we are going to start ripping our way through the atmosphere. Obviously, like, down this deep, the, uh, the, the time accelerate is quite quite lame um I, I i could do with obviously a little bit more acceleration here but we are flying quite low over the desert here and once again i'm worried that maybe i've come down too hard but we can't really do much about it at this point in time but i do see that beautiful continent just over there and that fills me with hope that fills me with great hope and the fact that we are now sailing over these mountains fills me with even more hope we have quite a lot of fuel that is available to us but i don't really think we need to use it at this point in time uh we seem to be coming down quite strong and and there we can just see the uh, distant glitter of all the buildings in the Kerbal Space Center. This, of course, would be the ideal place for us to put down. But I don't know about you. If we're coming from all the way from Juna, I don't think putting down in the grasslands around it is going to be all that hard. And... As we finally come down for a landing from these guys, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me, not just for this adventure, guys, but for everything that has happened during this entire series. We have done some amazing things from rolling around, rolling pins around the Kerbal Space Center. We've sent uh, missions to the... the to Minmus. We've had mo missions that have gone from the moon to Minmus and back again. It's all just been a crazy, crazy time. Finally, the Juna boys are back home and I am going to leave you with some close encounters that I've not been able to uh, display to you before now. Uh, just to say thank you very much for watching, guys. I will see you possibly later today, but probably tomorrow for my first look at Kerbal Space Program 1.0. And I hope you guys are having a great time. Bye! Seriously, though, no, thank you guys so much for watching. It just, oh, this would have been rubbish if you guys weren't watching. Could you imagine just a lame series that doesn't get watched? Thank you. Thank you so much.